I normally don't do these types of videos anymore, but considering that we're talking about a topic that's close to my heart, video games, as well as a major factor as to what I'm talking about on my channel, I feel like I had to make a quick video detailing the situation as well as giving my thoughts on it. I also apologize for not being so stellar with the editing here, wanted to get this video out, so here's some gameplay, I don't know of what yet. Hi, I'm Manga Common. To start this video off, I want to say the following. Speak with your voice, vote with your wallet. That's something I want you all to remember going forward with this video. So the name Sweet Baby Inc. has been floating around. Pretty much one side of YouTube has been complaining about the company for months on end now. And I too need to stress that I'm not a fan of them either. Before we go any further, what exactly is Sweet Baby Inc.? They happen to be a consulting firm for video games, mostly focusing on the narrative aspects of a decent chunk of AAA games. Some of their games include Insomniac Spider-Man, Alan Wake 2, The Latest God of War, and everyone's favorite punching bag, Goodbye Volcano High. Die, you piece of shit! Oh, and can't forget the classics, Forspoken, Suicide Squad, and Starfield. I wasn't expecting that one. Although, to be fair and clear, the Forspoken and Starfield ones are just a bit more iffy to claim that, since I haven't seen a connection between them. Just take those with a grain of salt, because the source that I got this from was IMDB, and those can be actually edited by people. I only bring it up as a possibility because I can see it because the writing in those games... Mm, wasn't all that great. I just move shit! WITH MY FREAKING MIND! On their own website, big AAA studios like Ubisoft, Square Enix, or Xbox, Sweet Baby Inc. claims them. And countless more A-list big-name companies with their services offering writing, narrative, representation, consultation, and even development in some cases. Now, whether or not you like the games I brought up, or think these games are good or bad, that's not really relevant to the conversation that I want to talk about. It's not exactly unheard of that gaming companies would outsource jobs or bring on help for things in the company. So the question is, what's the big deal with this? Why are people throwing their arms up with SBI? Which, yeah, I don't like their name. I'm just gonna call them SBI from now on. Well, according to the internet, the inclusion of SBI in some games has lowered their quality by changing things in a narrative direction, with the addition of inclusive and diversity in these games. Yes, this goes into the whole idea of woke or anti-woke, and thus, turning a subject that shouldn't be political into a political one. Now, if you've been on this channel before, you know that I typically dislike the term woke. I do think that it can be applied to people, as in the inclusion of diverse and inclusive elements into games, cartoons, or what have you, does happen, but people will often label anything into woke, and will do it in the worst way possible, and doesn't help their argument. FUCKING PRONOUNS! Probably pretty dumb, huh? Even if hypothetically you had a point on some things, not saying I agree with the previous clip, the way they go about it is the worst way imaginable because people won't listen to your points if you're screaming your head off like a maniac and will reference that no matter what. You're giving them ammunition to dismiss you. On the other hand, I do believe that attempts to be regressive for brownie points is a thing that happens. Give people stuff you know they want, so you can inject things yeah. that maybe they aren't familiar with or maybe they don't know they want, but make them like that stuff. People are fickle creatures. And if we're able to exploit something to gain positive press, or gain investment, or advantages, or what have you, we will. People have done this for centuries. It's not unheard of. This is a natural part of human nature, and it's better to err on the side of caution and skepticism when it comes to people's say, especially when money is involved. It's not like people are going to tell you how they make the sausage in public. Inject things yeah. that maybe they aren't familiar with, or maybe they don't know they want, but make them like that stuff. Of course, one thing that I don't really care for is when employees of a company throw tantrums and try to remove a Steam curator group that has listed all the games that Sweet Baby Inc. had on the service. And even then, went after the person's account, begging it for it to be removed. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. Now, if there was legit targeted harassment going on with the curator, I do not agree with that. But from what I saw, there really wasn't anything to suggest that happening. And just because someone lists your games on a Steam curator page, they have every right to do so. And if Steam found an issue with this page, it would have been taken down, especially by now. Instead, you have a Streisand effect happening, with the curator page earning over 100k followers at the time of me recording this video as well as putting more and more eyes onto SBI. Bravo, genius! Now, SBI is a consultation company, and as such, the companies of games need to reach out to SBI for their services, so whatever power they have is tangential. 
but with stunts like this from their employees, it sure as hell isn't helping their case. If anything, this is a public nightmare and now the eyes have been drawn onto them. Of course, the biggest issue I have with a company like SBI is that their work has the idea of stagnation to it. Well, either that or they suck at their job. One example I can actually think of is Insomniac Spider-Man 2. Everyone remembers the whole deal with Insomniac messing up the flag in Miles' apartment, giving him the Cuban flag instead of the Puerto Rico one. Is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? Now, I'm gonna say it, it's unknown if SBI knew that, but when touting that you're trying to be in being respectful to people of marginalized positions, stuff like that can raise an eyebrow and make you go, do you really care? Or how about changing up a language for inclusivity's sake? I recall that being a bit of contention back in the day. Now, I'm not gonna burn the entire game to the ground over this, but it is incredibly distasteful and comes off as more as pandering than having actual inclusion. Again, there's nothing that directly ties that these choices were suggested by Sweet Baby Inc. And we likely won't know due to the contractual obligations to keep hushed about it. Hell, I'd be more curious to ask how the sensitivity reading section of SBI dropped the ball with this stuff. Again though, we don't know how much they had influence into the script. But with their names slathered all over this game, as well as stuff that hasn't been as stellar as of late, people are starting to take notice. Especially with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League flopping as it did. <laughs> no! Hardly no! no. Nah. Worth it! People will see this. Writing trends in games tend to do that. Personally for me, I don't really see a need for a company like SBI. I do think there needs to be a consultation for some elements in storytelling. Hell, I've got a few friends who are willing to do that for me when I start my own projects later this year. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher-ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. And quote on quote, woke games can be good. Any game can be good. Hell, going back to Spider-Man 2, yeah, I got a lot of issues with its writing, story, and the inclusion of those damn Mary Jane segments. Again... I don't care if she's OP, I do not care for those sections. If she's a little OP, I don't give a shit. Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility! You don't like those! But it has elements of good gameplay to it. To me, it was just weighed down by the bad. Also, Insomniac, if by some chance you are watching this, you really dropped the ball with Venom. You really should have given us more than just a few minutes of gameplay of it. Such wasted potential. Um, we didn't make her play. I, to the point where I said, we're going to do it. I don't care. We'll cut other stuff because I want to make sure that... Back on point, the issue isn't that SBI is one of these many companies. I'm sure there are plenty of consultation firms out there that we're just not aware of that have a hand in some of the writing of games we know. It's just that SBI is currently one of the more publicly known ones that have been dragged into the sunlight because of some of their employees acting like idiots. Part of the reason why people are joining the curator list is to learn what games are and aren't affiliated with the company. Why? Because they have a right to choose what products they want to spend their hard-earned cash on. Yes, see, we're getting back to the whole speak with your voice, vote with your wallet. People are allowed to voice their objections. They're allowed to learn what companies are associated with their purchases and can choose not to support companies with their money if they so choose. It's the basic foundation for business. Capitalism, baby. I'm not saying the customer is always right. But customers are allowed to buy and not purchase products, especially if they're not a fan of the choices or affiliates with said products. I personally don't find the games that SBI affiliated to be all that grand or interesting to me nowadays. I like games with diverse characters, whether it be appearance, gender, nationality, or even political diversity. There's nothing wrong with having diversity in a game. The only time I don't like it is when it's thrown in my face or made to be insufferable. But stuff shoved down a person's throat or when it's done in a cringy way is not the way to go about it. When it comes to the writing of games, I do have my hang-ups with choices made in gaming. Hell, my channel is dedicated to that whole idea of talking about tropes, characters, and things I like and don't like about the gaming scene, both retro and modern in that regard. But when I see companies enlisting the help of consultation companies like SBI, I have to wonder why they need them. Yes, I understand not wanting to include offensive things to your audience so people won't be offended. I do get that. But the idea keeps cropping up in my head about how far do they have to go with the writing. What do they do once they get their grubby little hands into the writing of the games? What is their involvement, and how much involvement do they actually have? Do they change core elements of the story? 
Or do they just add little things right here that just, you know, act as spice for the main game? And why do companies enlist these services? Why not get actual talented writers to do this? Why not hire better writers if you want a good story? Well, there's a reason for that. ESG. <laughs> Now I'm not about to dive headfirst in the pool of black rock. That's way outside my wheelhouse, and I'd probably crack my head on the ground if I do that. What you'd need to know is that there's an investment incentive in order to appeal to the ESG scores so that can land more money for companies that are much more progressive. I'm sure I messed it up somehow. I am me, after all. But there are companies that have contracted the services of Sweet Baby Inc. who get investments by two of the biggest asset holders in the world, who push the idea of ESG and in turn incentivizes more pushes for diversity and inclusion even if it's just performative. Again, I am not an expert on this subject and it expands more into just the video game world from what I understand. My point is that I don't want to support games that do this sort of thing. I want to support games that actually do hold good writing to them. And to me, games that associate with Sweet Baby Inc. and have their services don't exactly do that. Then again, I often think that when you outsource people to work on the narrative and change things, it can lead to some hiccups. There is a reason why the phrase, too many cooks spoil the broth, is a thing. I hold the same meaning right here as well. Now viewers, you obviously can disagree with me. That's the beauty of having opinions and not being under the mindset of, don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. That this is a free market and people are allowed to support a company or not based on what affiliates are in said product, or if there are things they just don't like. I mean, you don't like Batman being killed off and kill the Justice League? Good for you, that's fine. You don't like the repetitive gameplay? Also good. You don't like the fact that a $70 game is charging you microtransaction and is a live service game? BURN IT TO THE GROUND! And of course, there are other companies like SBI out there. There has to be, and they're probably doing things than games I do not like. I'm sure there are. There are things I really don't care for. So, stuff like this, and learning there's a concerted effort to push things as a smokescreen or are just plain bad, it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths, even if it's not true. But the fact of the matter that representatives of the company are acting like really bad idiots, it's gonna push people away no matter what. And people who point out the affiliation, don't want to support games that have SBI's grubby mitts all over them, or don't care for how the people who work at SBI are acting, they shouldn't be labeled as ists or phobes. There are people who are terrible like that? Sure, there's always gonna be people like that in any group. You find enough people, you're gonna find a jackass or two. But does that mean the entirety of people who don't like writing choices are like that? I like to think not, but depending on who you ask, probably. But I think that kind of thinking is dangerous and paints way too much of a big brushstroke on people. All I know is this. AAA games have become bloated. They've become boring to me, and with some exceptions like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I tend to stick to more of the indie scene for most of the part nowadays. Either that or Nintendo. I find the games that don't have the AAA moniker to be much more engaging both gameplay and narrative-wise. I want to make it clear that some games have affiliation with SBI, but we don't know the full extent of their work in it. Still, people have been noticing a trend in gaming and are starting to do things about it. Whether our debt's good or bad, that's up to perspective and depends on the game. There's nothing wrong with wanting to not support products that have an affiliation with things you are downgrading said product. But that is just my thoughts and perspective. I do apologize for a short video and not doing the content I'm normally known for. We're at a point where there's misinformation spreading, such as claiming SBI removed their studio affiliations from their website when they didn't. So I want to be safe and do a wait and see with this situation because, hey, who doesn't want to watch a tire fire go up in flames? Oh no, they're stealing the tire fire! <laughs> so what do we do now? Simple. We wait, we watch, we choose what to buy with our precious funds, and enjoy Boom Boonger! <laughs> to be serious though for a minute, I don't know the full extent of SBI. Are they a plague on the internet? Possibly, I mean anything can be. I don't care for the writing that choices that they put in the games, and I think that they're probably not the best people around, especially with how they've been acting, how people don't want to play their games. But that, again, is just my perspective from what I've seen, and I'm a flawed human being. I'm willing to admit when I got things wrong, but until then, I'll just hold this opinion to wait and see. I'm Manga Common, and have a lovely day.
Peace out. Die, you piece of shit! <laughs>